is the narcissist one big illusion warning for this video there is some trigger words in here those that trigger if you are able to listen write them out if you can as those are the areas to work on so that they no longer trigger you into pain and so you can find coping strategies to keep your sense of happiness and well-being up so is the narcissist all one big illusion as we all seem to fall madly truly and deeply in love with the most amazing person we have ever met yet is it real i'm elizabeth shaw welcome to the channel thank you to all the returning subscribers this channel is all about the narcissistic personality disorder to give you more understanding of those you might be dealing with in your life and how to recover from narcissistic abuse if you are new to the channel please do subscribe and please hit the bell if you'd like notifications when videos are released this video is all about the illusion of a narcissist. Those first few days, weeks, months, and some lead us down the garden path for years. We believe we've met the most amazing, kind, generous, loving person. Some may seem to have had a really difficult time in the past with everything their exes, usually all their exes, have put them through and their parents have put them through. And they will tell us all the pity plays as they are always the victim or the hero and they are never the villain. And we know within ourselves that we can help them, we can make them feel so much better. Now, with some people like ourselves that have been with a narcissist, this past could be true. Although, to start with, most of us blame ourselves, so... If you're meeting someone new, just watch out for previous patterns of behaviour, which of course survivors can have as they, like ourselves, didn't learn how we should be treated and accepted behaviour we never should have. Um, just like us, we may have had a narcissistic parent, so we end up falling for narcissistic partners as we believe it to be normal. So if the person you're dealing with exploits others and feels entitled, you are not dealing with someone who's been a past victim or has possible PTSD, you are dealing with a narcissist. Some survivors can still be very guarded, just observing words and behaviour. Do they admit mistakes? Do they question things? Can they reflect or do they always blame it on all others? Most importantly, listening to our instincts. Even when we are unsure as to what they are telling us, they are usually right. Whether you got together with a victim narcissist or a grandiose narcissist or anything in between, it was all an illusion. The narcissist just manipulates us from beginning to middle to the end if you can create enough barriers to make an end. And most will try even after the relationship has ended, which is why you have to put those barriers in place so that they cannot try and come back into your life. They start off by finding out everything they possibly can about us from friends, family, social media, conversations with us, stalking us through our social media. They will mirror all our likes and all our dislikes. They will come along as the hero, too good to be true. And yes, unfortunately, they are too good to be true. They will then slowly manipulate you through gaslighting, projection, silent treatment, verbal abuse, pity plays, lying, cheating, threats, physical abuse to slowly take away our self-esteem, our self-trust, our self-worth, our belongings, anything and everything they can. And it's nothing compared to the aftermath. Once we do finally escape them, once you're out, they somehow manage to fill every single bit of your headspace. You know it was all lies. You know it's all a great big con. But you've been left with so many questions and endless emotions that seem to be taking control of your life. Even now you're free of them. And how is it possible that they still have so much control over your mind? The trauma bond and all that manipulation does not help you process it all and move forward. It's an uphill battle to start, but you can and you will recover from this. 
Not only have you got to wean yourself off them, which is hard as it is coming off a drug, it's like coming off any drug, You do. most people do have to rebuild their lives from scratch and learn the whole relationship was a complete lie and a complete illusion. The person you fell in love with never truly existed. Illusion has several meanings and the narcissist delivers each one of these. Illusion an instance of a wrong or misinterpreted experience. We live the reality at the beginning when they treat us so well and most deliver their promises to start. So when their admiration phase fades, they, the one that seeks attention from us and att- acts so nice to us, and then suddenly we get their hurtful face, the envious one that seeks to destroy us. And due to their manipulation, we misinterpreted it as something that we had done wrong when we did nothing wrong. It is who they are. They have a disorder. Another illusion is a false belief or an idea. Again, when they're two faces, with their two faces, we are led to believe that false reality is them, which is truly them, but both sides is who they are. That is who they were in that moment, which makes it all the harder to see that no matter how nice you can be to them, no matter what you do to serve them, and no matter how nice they can be, they are also extremely hurtful and some are extremely dangerous. The bad side is not worth living through for those odd moments of their nice side. No one deserves to be abused and no one de- deserves to be treated in the way that they do. And another illusion, a deceptive appearance of togetherness. With all the false promises that they make, often to start with, they might have wanted to spend so much time with you and promises of all the future plans, creating all the future dreams, just to walk away from each and every promise in the future and never committing to these. So just how do they do what they do to us? Some say being with a narcissist is an illusion, which yes, it is, and no, it is not. We live the actual life. We live those actual moments whilst we are with them on a day-to-day basis. As confusing and as hurtful the experience is, the reality we lived was real. What is the illusion is the narcissist and what they do to us. Hideous mind games to distort our memories, our realities, to sell us something that isn't even truly real, that they cannot deliver. Yet because it feels real, because in that moment when they are treating us so well, we live that reality. It's hard to see the extent of the dire situation that we are in. And before we know it, we are deep, deep in and have to climb our way back out. If the narcissist in your life was a parent, a boss, friend, family member, neighbor or partner, the person you met or the nice side to that person that you think you know is not who they truly are on a genuine continued basis. They can idolize us and raise us so high. We truly believe they are loving, kind, compassionate people who will always look out for us and be there for us. This might not always be the case if it was a parent, depending on where they are on the spectrum. But as we are raised by them, we don't know any different. And even though we might find their behavior towards us extremely hurtful and wrong at times, it can take years before we realize this isn't how we should be treated. As for friends, bosses and neighbours, we might know something is not right. But as we believe they are good and they seem like genuine people when we first met them, it's hard to see through the illusion of what they truly are. A partner will go all out in the idealisation stage to raise us so high so we get tripped into falling head over heels in love with them. They idolize us to draw us in like a moth to the flame. And once they have us close enough, we get burned. With their devaluation stage, we aren't doing exactly what they want, exactly when they want and exactly how they want. 
their envious face comes out. They become jealous that we have a mind of our own, that we're not giving them the attention they believe they deserve, and they seek to take us down. Yet, as we live the reality of the idolization stage, even though it's all an act and all an illusion, our minds become confused as they manipulate us with all the tactics that I'm about to go into. So we tread carefully, walking on eggshells and do all we can to help them whilst slowly destroying ourselves, yet we just do not see it, especially as then, bam, the nice admiration seeking face is back, idolising us again and making us feel great again, and this reinforces within our own minds that it must be us. It was never ever you. They confuse you by treating you better than anyone ever else has and then treating you worse than anyone ever ha else has. We fall in love with the lies of the person that they sold to us. Then we have to deal with overcoming all the lies that they deliver us. So out of nowhere, that devaluation stage hits, the verbal abuse, the put downs, telling us that you cannot do that, the over or the covert, I wouldn't do that if I was you, the silent treatments that cause so much psychological pain, we question what on earth we did wrong and most often chase after them to avoid the drama and the pain within our minds to restore the peace. Then they will project blame shift and gaslight with you're insecure, you're too sensitive, if you hadn't I wouldn't, that didn't happen, if only you'd, you look fat, you look too thin, the over and the covert, I wouldn't wear that if I was you. The lie after lie, the cheating, the false promises that they never deliver, which again is turned on to us. They exaggerate everything they do well or do good, even making things up so we question ourselves. I did that for you last week. How can you not remember? You're losing your mind. And the classic, you're going crazy and you need help. How many of us ended up in therapy due to all their manipulation mind games that they throw at us to take us down? And then, of course, they shall provoke an argument, especially when there's a special occasion happening that they'll not be the centre of attention of or when they are trying to escape any part of their wrongdoings. They will push, they will prod, they will poke at our instincts, sorry, our insecurities, our vulnerabilities and our weaknesses, all the things that matter the most to us as these are the things that we shall most passionately defend. So we then end up reacting. They then will either downplay what they did or forget what they did and make a huge deal about what we did. So we take the blame and we feel at fault. Then they will guilt trip, pity play and triangulate to break down our boundaries one by one. All this leaves our minds in a state of confusion, questioning our self-worth, our beliefs, our thoughts, our feelings, our opinions, our realities, our abilities, our trust and so many more often leaving us with anxiety, trauma bonding, depression, CPTSD and other health issues, which then when they top it off by smearing our name to those around us and we are left dis disorientated, them telling us that we're going crazy, we actually genuinely feel like we are not understanding that it's the very people that are telling us this that are sending us this way. And even when we get a break to escape them and the fog lifts, those that seem to deliver never ending smear campaigns and mind games with the help of the narcissist flying monkeys and enablers who just do not see it like we once did not see it. We are often left isolated from support, feeling like no one will ever understand. Even the authorities seem to think that we appear unhinged when we try to report them, when we try to explain it, and it is soul-destroying and devastating. You are far from alone. This, unfortunately, is happening to millions of people around the world who understand exactly what you've been through as they've lived through the same experience. People are out there that want to help and support you through this. 
People have survived and moved on to much, much happier, more peaceful lives and you will too. With awareness growing, people will get involved less and less and one day young children will get the help and the support they need so future generations don't develop this disorder in the first place. Unfortunately, narcissistic psychopaths are born, but these types are the minority. Narcissists and narcissistic sociopaths seem to be a growing epidemic in modern day. Or is it just with social media and more people being able to speak out and speak up? It is just growing awareness. After devaluation often comes the discard again. This is most often another illusion as days, weeks, months or even years later they reappear. To try and suck us back into their lies, they come at us full of lies and false promises to change. And like many, if you've not recovered, we do take them back. The average is seven attempts to get out and stay out of this kind of relationship. So you are not alone. We want to believe in the good person we think we see. And when they come back all charming, we want to make it work. Only to learn time and time again, it will never work. They are who they are. They have a disorder. It is who they are. And then we realise enough is enough. We are worth so much more. It's time, as difficult and as painful as it is, to walk away and rebuild our lives because the short-term pain in doing that far outweighs the long-term pain of a cycle of abuse that they put us through. The discard stage is again another illusion that holds us back. Back in that painful past which does not serve our happy future and most of us do it with everything we've been through it's it's one of those things that we take them back but at some point you need to make a conscious effort to say enough is enough within your mind. No more. It's time to move on from this and stop dwelling on this. Yes, we all need to learn about narcissistic personality disorder. We all need to gain that clarity and understanding of what we've been through so that we can learn from it and grow from it. And this this takes people different time scales depending on how long and how much they have personally been through we need to process the pain the grief we need to let it go and move on for most there comes a point when they can still read listen and learn about it and it has no impact on their present or their future the triggers slowly fade as they've created a new life For others, there comes a point when they just completely walk away from learning about it, which is okay so long as they understand and know enough not to fall back into another trap. What we focus on is what we become. So no, I don't mean you focused on abuse, so you got abuse. Nobody deserves to be treated that way. When our minds are focused on the past, we stay stuck in the past. When we focus on fear, on the what ifs, on the what they will do next, we are living things within our minds that are not happening at that moment. When the smear campaign hits, if we pay attention to them and it instead of ourselves and our truths, we focus more and more on why are they doing this? Why is this happening to me? Keeping them trapped within our lives and our minds. The more we learn about what they do, the more answers we have to those whys. And at the same time, we must focus on ourselves, on our new dreams, on our new future, on what will go right for us. The past is done. It's happened. It needs leaving in the past. The present is the moment to find and create new things to be grateful for to imagine a future of our dreams as the future is not yet written and we have every opportunity and every possibility to write it as we want to live now as you move through recovery the realizations of what's truly happened can hit you one by one and make no mistake they can and they do hit us hard what we've been through, what we've done, what we've put up with, just how insidious they truly are as the trance, the spell, the fog that they put us under. 
living under their illusion of reality, working through our own guilt of being an enabler at times as we truly believe them and didn't know or understand what our very own instincts were shouting out at us. Make no mistake, none of this is your fault whatsoever. No one asked for this and no one deserves this. We just get sucked into their lies and their games and we do our absolute best to try and help and support them. But leaving that they are a good person, not seeing, knowing or understanding the truth of the actual reality of what they are doing due to their many manipulation tactics of our mind. And our minds are incredible things as we see one reality the illusion of the narcissist that plays nice, their admiration face. And they do it so charming and so convincingly as that's who they are in that moment in time. Yet it is an illusion to cover up an act. They don't truly know who they are, why they change from one person to the other, from black to white. And with some, this can take days, months, weeks or even years, depending on what their needs are and what they perceive their need to be met at that time. When they do all they can to portray themselves as a good, kind, loving person, then they are truly... What they are truly doing is matching all our likes and dislikes, learning all our weaknesses, which everyone has, uh, learning all our strengths, goals and dreams so they can match them, the false promises to help and support us to further down the line, rip them wide open one by one, take us down and try to destroy us, to devalue who we are little by little as they may feel criticism or no longer in control or jealous of us, so they feel a need to take us down. Some act on impulse, others are extremely calculated, especially the malignant narcissist. As the narcissistic personality disorder is on a spectrum, some of them are severe. But no matter which kind or what extent you've been through, we are individuals with different tolerance levels and different pain thresholds. So it was as severe as it was to you personally. There are those who once we understand what they are and what they do, we can learn to limit our time around them, respond and never react, observe and not absorb. Others, however, no contact is the only way. It's not always easy, however, it's a must. If you haven't left or you're about to, the time of leaving is the most dangerous and you are most at risk as they have lost control. So low end, high end or anything in between, do not let them know you are leaving. Create a plan of escape and list any friends, family, authorities, domestic violence support groups for help to make sure that you get out safely. Deep down, you know that you are a honest, unconditioning, unconditional, sorry, loving, kind person that wants to help others, look out for others and support others. And if you are unsure of this at the moment because of what you've been through and the things you might have done when you weren't aware of what was happening to you, most likely you will have had good intentions at that time. So, Write the things down, write the things you have done for other people to make your mind more aware of the good person that you are deep inside and the good things that you do. When people come out of narcissistic relationships, they blame themselves, they question themselves. Most people think they are the narcissist and this isn't true. So start writing down, start learning about who you are. With good intentions, there is no wrong way or right way to live your life. We all make mistakes, we all can recognise these mistakes and we can all learn from these mistakes. The strength of character you have is often why the narcissist picked you out in the first place. Meaning that you have every ability to start your life over and make it bigger and better than it was before. You can learn to trust your instincts, rebuild your self-esteem and your self-worth, rebuild your bank balance. They never can. They are stuck on a pattern of repeat. 
It's a journey, but believe me, if you work at it and you keep working at it, it will get you to where you want to be. Now's the time to do what you want when you want without having to answer to them, creating new dreams for you. Get any help, advice and support that you need moving forwards. You are far from alone in this. Stay strong and keep going. Stay no contact or grey rock, always and forever. Yes, you might have to process some pain from this video or other videos, but do not stay stuck in it. Write things out, scream things out, grieve. You are allowed to grieve. You're allowed to care. You're an individual. It's how you want to process it. But then step out of the negative past and go watch something or do something that makes you smile, makes you laugh. Find a photo or think about something that shifts your state of mind out of the pain and onto something that brings you inner joy. As much as we need the answers to our whys, as much as we need to give ourselves closure and as much as we need to learn about these people so that we can avoid them, in the future, the most important part of our journey is to recover and is learning about ourselves. Write down all the good things about you. Find them and write them all down. Write down the things you enjoy doing for you. Write down where you'd like to be six months from now. Get creative and make that vision board or make a picture collage of your future, something that makes you smile and have it as your screensaver. And now go and think about three things that you are truly grateful for in your life, no matter how big or no matter how small. Think of one thing that you're working towards or working to become and six months from now and take action on it today. Take those steps, no matter how big or how small, and recognize the achievements as you go along your way. You can and you will recover from this. And it does take people different amount of time scales because we are all individuals and it's about finding the ways that work for you. There is the link to the Facebook page in the video description and also to some courses that I run that are more structured, more detailed to help with recovery. Any advice that you have for anybody, please do add it in the comments because this channel is all about building a community of survivors to help each other through and to support each other through. Thank you very much for listening. Bye.